We're taking another step up the ladder of German grammar. But don't worry, you won't suffer from grammatical vertigo. It's all safe and easy to explain. I'm going to talk to you about the dative case. You probably noticed in the film that there are endings added to the articles in the dative case, a bit like the accusative, just different. But I can do better than that in terms of an explanation, so keep listening and all will be revealed in due course. In the meantime, I'll give you the key uses. The dative is used after some prepositions and for the indirect object of the verb, the one who benefits. It's about receiving presents, flowers, chocolates and getting help. We hope you'll benefit from this module, so sit back, relax into the dative case and let us help you. Do you remember how the accusative case works? If not, have a look back over it, because the grammar of the dative case is very similar. They're a bit like non-identical twins. The accusative case is used to identify the direct object of a verb. The dative case is used to point out the indirect object. What does that mean? Well, if you write a letter, for example, the letter is the direct object of the activity of writing. I'm writing a letter. Ich schreibe einen Brief. But you usually don't write it just for the sake of writing. You write it in order to send to somebody. This somebody, the addressee, is the indirect object of what you do. The addressee benefits from the action of writing. In English, we either use the preposition to or simply word order to anchor the indirect object in a sentence. I'm writing a letter to my mother, or I'm writing my mother a letter. In German, we don't use the version with the word to, but identify the indirect object by putting a dative ending on the article. Ich schreibe meiner Mutter einen Brief. By the way, we have a few dative endings in English too. I'm writing a letter to him. You can't say to he. I'm writing a letter to her. You can't say to she. There are remnants of the accusative case in English, as we've seen. I see him, I see her, and there are traces of the dative too. But let's get back to German. Let's take the nouns the man, der Mann, the child, das Kind, and the woman, die Frau. Write to them and see what happens. I write the man a letter. Ich schreibe dem Mann einen Brief. So the masculine singular dative ending is EM. Remember English him. I write the child a letter. Ich schreibe dem Kind einen Brief. So the neuter singular dative ending is EM, M as well. Again, think of the English him. And finally, I write the woman a letter. Ich schreibe der Frau einen Brief. So the feminine singular ending is er, er. Remember English her. It's the same er ending. The plural forms are the same in all three genders as per usual. But, Achtung, watch out. In the dative plural, the noun gets an ending too. Writing to the children is, Ich schreibe den Kindern. So we get a double whammy N in the plural, one added to the article, one to the noun. With the N on the noun as well, you can't confuse this with the accusative singular. Ich sehe den Mann. Ich schreibe den Männern einen Brief. As with the accusative, we also add these dative endings to other words that precede nouns like ein, kein, mein, etc. We get, for example... Ich schreibe meinem Freund. Schreibst du deiner Mutter bald? Or Wir schreiben unseren Kindern. And again, as in the accusative, and be grateful that I sound like a broken record, the personal pronouns have a special dative form too. Let's get some German lollies and a German class to illustrate this point. Bonbons sind lecker. Ich gebe mir die Bonbons. I'm rewarding myself for hard work. It's important to give yourself a treat now and then. Ich gebe dir die Bonbons. Ich gebe ihm die Bonbons. 
Ich gebe ihr die Bonbons. Ich gebe ihm, dem Mädchen, die Bonbons. Ich gebe uns die Bonbons. Ich gebe euch die Bonbons. That's you, familiar, plural. Ich gebe ihnen die Bonbons. Ich gebe ihnen die Bonbons. Formal address, singular and plural. Just like the accusative, there are prepositions that are always followed by the dative case as well. The most common ones are aus, außer, bei, entgegen, gegenüber, mit, nach, seit, von, zu. We'll give you an example of how to use each one. Aus. Out of. Sie kommt frisch aus der Dusche. She's just got out of the shower. Außer. Except. Alle gehen ins Kino außer ihm. Everyone's going to the cinema except him. Bei. With, at, near. Er wohnt bei seinen Eltern. He lives with his parents. Entgegen. Contrary to. Towards. Ich fahre ihr entgegen. I'm driving towards her. Gegenüber. Opposite. Die Post liegt dem Bahnhof gegenüber. The post office is opposite the railway station. Mit. With. Sie fahren mit dem Fahrrad zur Uni. They go by bike to uni. Nach. After. To. Nach der Pause fährt sie zum Bahnhof. After the break, she's driving to the station. Seit. Since. Sie leben seit dem 1. Mai in Berlin. They've been living in Berlin since the 1. of May. Von. From. Of. By. Ich höre nie etwas von ihm. I never hear from him. Zu. To. Ich fahre mit dem Bus zur Stadt. I go by bus to the city. And again like the accusative, the dative has its own question word for who, to inquire about an indirect object. You'll remember that wen shows the accusative case. You ask, Wen siehst du? Whom do you see? But we ask, Wem schenkst du das Buch? To whom are you giving the book? Wem shows the dative case. Wem leihst du dein Auto? To whom do you lend your car? Another thing we need to have a look at are the German verbs and verbal constructions that work differently from English so that you can't necessarily work out from English if it's going to be dative or accusative in German. Let's take the verb to help, for example. You may well think that the person you're helping is a direct object and therefore in the accusative. But for a German mind, that's not the case. You might do the dishes or mow the lawn in order to help. So the dishes and the lawn are seen as direct objects, and the person as the indirect object, the one who benefits, similar to writing a letter to somebody. The person is therefore in the dative in German, and we say... Ich helfe meiner Großmutter. Or er hilft seinen Freunden. Similar dative verbs are Antworten To answer Ich antworte ihm. Danken To thank Er dankt seiner Mutter. Folgen To follow Folgen Sie mir bitte. Gehören to belong to. Die Schaufel gehört deinem Vater. Gratulieren. To congratulate. Ich gratuliere dir herzlich. There are also some dative verbs that indicate an emotional response to something or someone. Verbs such as gefallen or leid tun. Let's take gefallen to appeal to. Das Bild gefällt mir. Literally. The picture appeals to me. There's no direct action. The picture doesn't do anything directly to me. Rather, the quality of the picture appeals emotionally to me. Similarly, with leid tun, to be sorry, 
We're talking about feeling compassion rather than physical pain. Er tut uns leid. We're sorry for him. Literally, he makes us suffer. He doesn't cause us suffering by doing anything directly to us. His situation arouses compassion in us. There's a role reversal in German. The person we feel sorry for is actually the subject of the verb. He causes us to feel compassion. We're therefore the indirect object. The majority of dative verbs, however, have both a direct object, often a thing, and an indirect object, often a person. And that brings us to the next point. What comes first in a sentence with two noun objects, the dative or accusative? Well, that's easy, as the word order is the same as in English. I give my friend a pen. Ich schenke meinem Freund einen Kuli. Or, you give the teacher the books back. Sie geben dem Lehrer die Bücher zurück. If either the accusative or dative is represented by a pronoun, the pronoun comes first, as it refers to something already known. Remember the drumroll principle? New, therefore more important information, generally comes later in a German sentence. So, I give it to my colleague. Ich schenke es meinem Kollegen. I give him a book. Ich schenke ihm ein Buch. However, when two pronouns are involved, the accusative comes first, exactly as in English when you say, I give it to him. Where you say, to him in English, you simply use the dative case in German. Ich gebe es ihm. Ich schenke sie, die Rose, ihm. Ich bringe ihn, den Kaffee, ihr. Deutsch gefällt mir. Der Dativ gefällt mir. You get pretty tired in the nominative case, working, doing all those chores. In the accusative case, you can be on the receiving end of some rough treatment. But the dative case is where you get the rewards. Being in the dative case is wonderful. It's my personal favorite. You get presents, flowers, chocolates. You receive help. Du gibst mir Blumen. Er hilft mir. I spend all day on my birthday in the dative case. But see for yourself. Nominative case. Ich schenke. Accusative case. Ich schenke die Bonbons. Dative case. Ich schenke dir die Bonbons. Enjoy practicing. Ich wünsche euch noch viel Spaß.